Welcome to the Hearthstone What's Next panel. Whoa! Wow! It, it feels so real! It's like I'm actually at BlizzCon! <laughs> ben, what are we doing with these? What's with the glasses? Guys, this is crazy. We can't be more happy to be here with you today. In fact, everybody here has already gotten to see the amazing cinematic that Ben Brode announced with our newest expansion. Is that right? We were all here to see it. Now, we on Hearthstone pride ourselves on avoiding the cheap parlor trick, the random marketing to-do. In fact, we like to keep things fairly simple, straightforward. But when we do it, we go all out. <laughs> And with that in mind, we'd like to invite you to pull out your own candle. Place it upon your heads. Candle, let's up. take another look at that amazing cinematic, this time in living cobalt vision. Legends tell of a vast underground world and the countless treasures that lie in store for worthy adventurers. You've signed up the best. You're on a great quest to find the mighty mother load. There's treasure galore, but perils in store and construction that isn't up to code. Trespass with care, there's sure to be something rare. You can grab all the loot that you can handle. Such riches you'll own, but leave one thing alone. You know they can go. And if you steal the light, you then must take flight, eluding each hazard and each trap. It's a chaotic race as the monsters give chase, and all the while you're trying to follow the map. They're gaining on you, your options are few, and you fear that you're never gonna get home. You sought after wealth, will you lose all your health? To kobolds and catacombs. <laughs> it's kobolds and catacombs! There you have it. That's the absolute latest in state-of-the-art kobold VR. Props to our cinematics team for putting that together. So, who wants to hear a story? I have a story for you. You guys want to hear a story? 10,000 years ago, something happened. Now, we don't know what happened because kobolds don't write anything down. But we do know that it was around this time the kobolds started to dig. When all the world is crafting war, when shore to shore the warships moor, when sun and skies hold dread, listen up, my son. Pack it up and run. Put this candle on your head. When the seas of blood start churning, when the legion comes a-burning, when frets and threats above abound, just grab your pick and light your wick and dig, dig, dig deep down. This is Cobalt and Catacombs. <laughs> My name is Dave Kozak. I'm the lead mission designer for Hearthstone. My name is Ben Thompson. I'm the art director. I'm Peter Whalen. I'm one of the designers on the Hearthstone team. Over the next 40 minutes or so, we're going to tell you all about what's upcoming next in Hearthstone. So, Peter, kick us off. What is happening in Hearthstone? What's this expansion all about? This is Kobolds and Catacombs. This is our love letter to classic dungeon crawling. Gather your party and venture forth into a deep dungeon filled with horrible monsters, terrifying traps, and phenomenal treasure. So how did we get here? For every expansion, a bunch of us get together in a room, we talk about what's next. We'd just done Ungoro with its enormous dinosaurs. We'd done Knights of the Frozen Throne with the Lich King and his horrible undead minions. And so we wanted to do something a little different, something a little more whimsical, a little more classic Warcraft. And so someone pitched, 
what if we did the treasure set? Hmm, treasure set sounds pretty cool. And so we were on board. We were going to make the treasure set. And that is how Blingtron's Ludapalooza was born. That's right, Blingtron's <laughs> Ludapalooza. We were going to explore the history of Azeroth's most enigmatic treasure golem. We even talked to some people on the World of Warcraft team and put the art from Blingtron's card image in our Year of the Mammoth preview. But the more we explored Blingtron's Ludapalooza, the less we liked Blingtron as the heart of the set. We really wanted to do that classic dungeon dive, that feeling of going deep underground and unearthing amazing treasures. And that's how we hit on the Cobalt. These are the little rat creatures from World of Warcraft. They've got candles on their head that they absolutely love. They've got treasure that they mine in the earth. And so they were perfect for us. They were going to build us the Ur dungeon, the dungeon that contained all other dungeons inside of it. They would build us the catacombs. Now the catacombs offer a wonderful opportunity for the loot-minded explorer. There are tons of tunnels and darkened corners in which to get in a lot of trouble, and you and your party are going to get into a lot of trouble, make no mistake. Now, it's also no secret that the kobolds, not the sharpest tools in the shed. And as a result, the path is rarely straight ahead and almost never well constructed. These are the catacombs, and it was super important to the art team to start to figure out just what these look like, so not just for our design team, but for you, the players. So we took it upon ourselves to figure out the mind of the cobalt. What does it look like when you're in that small little rat-like mind? Well, you're probably very single-minded. You're probably very direct in your thought. You're probably not thinking too clearly and too straight when you're building these things. And as a result, well, the result is what you end up seeing. There's a lot of loot and a lot of treasure and a lot of places to store it. You hide it in these darkened corners, and you quickly have to find other ways that are both escape routes and entrance routes. You get things like gorges with rope bridges strung quickly across that you have to cross as soon as possible before it collapses beneath you. Open up a lava tube in the wall? Well, let's board that right up and get the heck out of Dodge. Now, ultimately, whether it be constructs hastily constructed in some homage to some ancient cobalt god, or some wondrous beast that's been enslaved and or maybe hired to guard the treasure from prying eyes, they should always and always point to this feeling of kobolds throughout every part of the dungeon. And you should definitely, if you don't see them, smell them and know <laughs> that they've been there. And that brings us to the new board. The new board is presented to you with the classic kobold look and style and aesthetic, such as it is. And as a result, there's tons of candles, make no mistake, but there's also beautiful magical items, wonderful piles of treasure hoarded away. And of course, for those people who run into players taking slightly too long on their turn before they rope out, tons of new clickables to explore. But do I need to remind you, don't touch the candles. <laughs> One of our artists, Becca Abel, she put it best. She said, if this is a love letter to the classic dungeon crawl, it's a love letter written by candlelight. So where we last left our kobolds, they were digging. They've been digging for thousands of years, which brings us to chapter two, wherein they find stuff. So dig, dig in with claws and paws, and dig, but always trust your schnoz, the nose knows to behold. The smells you sniff, delightful whiffs of silver, jewels, and gold. This is the treasure set. And if we're going to make a treasure set, we need some amazing treasures, some phenomenal treasures, some legendary treasures. For kobolds and catacombs, we have nine legendary weapons, one in each class. Ben showed you this earlier, so let's take a look at the dragon soul. This is the priest legendary weapon. It's a three mana zero three, and after you cast three spells in a turn, you summon a five five dragon. If you cast six spells in your turn, you'll get two five five dragons. It goes up from there. This is pretty cool, but priests aren't the only ones getting legendary weapons in the set. Let's take a look at the mage staff, Aluneth. <laughs> 
<laughs> At the end of your turn, draw three cards. So you're going to be drawing four cards a turn, which is pretty cool. It is, however, a 0-3 weapon, so you're not going to be bopping people on the head very much with this. In fact, that was one of the design challenges with having legendary weapons in Kobolds and Catacombs. It's really important to us that all the classes in Hearthstone feel distinct. And some of the classes have weapons, and some of them don't. So in order to get that across, the caster classes, mages, warlocks, priests, have zero attack weapons in Kobolds and Catacombs. In fact, early on in design, they didn't have any attack or any durability. Those were just not there on the card at all. In playtesting, it felt pretty weird, but we wanted to keep that sentiment, so they all have zero attack. Legendary weapons are something that's very, very near and dear to our hearts with this set. It's the, one of the last card types to gain legendary status. But legendary status comes with more than just a drake put across the top of the frame. It comes from more than just an orange gem at the base of that art. Legendary weapons need to feel that not only do they belong to the class to which they've been assigned, but also that they are personas in and of their own right. These weapons have names. They've earned these names. They've gained legend status and become legends in their own right long before they found a home in Hearthstone in many cases. Now, that happens oftentimes in magical weapons through a personality. They gain a little bit of a personality and almost a human-like quality all their own. And in some rare cases, can be found to communicate with the hero who wields them with, of course, delightful and sparkling conversation. If you played the World of Warcraft Legion expansion, you no doubt discovered very, very powerful artifact weapons. Some of those, like Aladeth, might be making their way into Hearthstone. So there was another important treasure fantasy that we wanted to get across, and that's the idea of you're running a dungeon and you find something and you don't know what it is. You're raiding the boss's stash of treasure and you find a potion. What does it do? Do you dare take a sip? This is something we wanted to explore. So the design team put our heads together and, and we figured out a way of doing this with what we call unidentified items. So uh, let's take a look at one. This is a new priest card, the unidentified elixir. We don't know what it does. Now, we know for sure it's going to cost three mana, and we know it will give a minion plus two, plus two, but it also has some kind of other effect, and we don't know what that other effect is. This is what the card looks like when you put it in your deck during the deck-building phase of the game, and you don't find out what it does until you're actually in the game, and you draw the card, and then its true nature is revealed. So, what could the unidentified elixir do? Let's take a look. It's definitely going to give a minion plus two, plus two, but it might give your minion lifesteal. It might give a minion divine shield. It could do some weird stuff, like give a minion plus two, plus two, and summon a 1-1 one, one copy of it. Or give a minion plus two, plus two, and a death rattle to return it to your hand. In design, we called these cherry, grape, banana, and peach. <laughs> so you have to adjust your strategy. Until you draw the card, you don't really know how to use it, and you need to figure out what delicious flavor you're going to get. Uh, we have a video of this in action, so you can see how it works. It's time to draw a card. Let's see what we get. It's unidentified. Right there, it gets identified in your hand. It's the Shadow Elixir. Ah, and we have a target for it on the board already. Now, aside from a challenge to design, this also is a challenge to our art team, because we were like, hey, guys, draw a thing, but don't show people what it is. The way our art team solved this problem is they kind of wrap them in this shroud so you don't really see what it is. It's kind of like you get to open a birthday present. We have three unidentified items in the game, uh, in Kobolds and Catacombs. We've shown you the unidentified elixir. There's some kind of unidentified shield and some sort of unidentified weapon. But we're not going to show those today. <laughs> they will remain unidentified. You see what I did there? You no, see that? Pretty good. <laughs> unidentified weapons and items are some of the core fantasies that we wanted to explore. When, as the design team sat down at the beginning of Kobolds and Catacombs, we wanted to figure out what are the core fantasies of treasure. Why is treasure so cool? And we hit on two things, anticipation and progression. Anticipation is that feeling as you open a treasure chest, when you're dreaming of all the awesome things that are inside of it. Unidentified items hit on that. As you draw them, you get that moment where you get to hope, oh, this is going to be the perfect one. For progression, we wanted to capture that sense that as you found treasure, your character would get better, and then you'd find better treasure, and your character would get even better. That's really cool. And so we captured that in the Spellstones.
This is the lesser Jasper Spellstone, the Druid Spellstone. For one mana, it does two damage to a minion, and while it's sitting in your hand, if you gain three armor, it'll upgrade. Let's see what that looks like. Now it deals four damage to a minion. If you gain three more armor, you get to deal six damage to a minion. So one mana, deal six damage to a minion is a pretty good deal. You might be willing to put some extra cards in your deck to gain armor to take advantage of something like that. Jasper Spellstone is cool, but some of the other Spellstones are the kinds of things you could build your entire deck around. Let's take a look at Shaman's Sapphire Spellstone. All right, for seven mana, you summon a copy of a friendly minion. If you overload a few mana crystals, you get two copies. Overload a few more. <laughs> And now, for seven mana, you get three copies of a friendly minion. If you combine that with something like Snow Fury Giant or Alakir, you get an instant army. Let's see that in action. <laughs> so we've got a Flame Wreath Faceless on the board. We've got a Sapphire Spellstone in hand. We'll upgrade our Spellstone to greater. And now, we've got an army of Flame Wreath Facelesses. Brutal, brutal. It's, it's pretty awesome. Seems pretty good. <laughs> so looking at Spellstones, these ended up being a real challenge in communication. Not just communication for the player, but also communication for the opponent oftentimes too, so that they know exactly what just happened to them, such as we just saw. Now, it's important, of course, that these feel very class specific. When you see a Spellstone, you should know immediately what class it's ascribed to. Additionally to that, though, what Peter mentioned before is very important, which is you want these to feel as though they're leveling up. You want to feel that progression as you go. So they really need to have three very clearly defined states. This ends up being a practice in looking at different silhouettes or colors and changing the palette thing of the uh, spellstones slightly, all of which help towards getting that sense of progression. Ultimately, the bonus of this is you get the golden version of this, and you've got three goldens that are distinctly different from one another and really cashing in on that fantasy of them leveling up in progression. And ultimately, they're some of our favorite effects in the game. So we've got a lot of treasure sitting here. We've got uh, legendary weapons, spellstones of great power. We've got unidentified items. You put that much treasure in one place, you're bound to attract some unsavory types. Adventurers! Adventurers, <laughs> the bane of every kobold. Beware those armored looting brutes. Beware recruits come seeking loot. Those tromping, stomping louts with swinging swords and for the hordes. They snuff our candles out. Adventures. You know, we have the fantasy. I mean, this says it's crawling with adventures. We have the fantasy of not just that you're putting adventures, an adventure party in your own deck, but your opponent might be doing the same. And in fact, in the single player dungeon run mode that we're going to talk about soon, you might be looting the dungeon and you might run across an AI controlled adventurer doing the same thing that you're doing in the dungeon, looking for loot, and you might have to fight. Adventurers. What's the deal with these guys? Who brings a guitar into a dungeon anyway? Who does that? Come on, Dave. Bards are awesome. What's a party without a little bit of music? <laughs> Adventurers are really cool, and they were very important to capturing that fantasy of doing the dungeon run. And so we introduced the guild. We needed you to have a few friends. This is a group of guys that raid the dungeon every week, venturing deep into the Cobalt Catacombs. And you've already met one of their members. Let's take a look at Marin the Fox. When Marin comes into play, he summons a 0-8 treasure chest for your opponent. We really like Marin the Fox, and he is the guild's chief procurement officer. Procurement. He goes out, he finds awesome treasures. So what are the treasures that Marin finds? Let's take a look. We've got Tolan's Goblet, draw a card and fill your hand with copies of it. We've got Zerog's Crown. Discover a legendary minion and summon two of it. <laughs> we have the Golden Cobalt. It replaces your hand with legendary minions. And we have the Wondrous Wand. You draw three cards and they're all free. <laughs> Marin is pretty fantastic. And the coolest thing about him is that you can play him starting next week. He's free for all of our players as soon as you log in. 
And even better, if you're sitting here at BlizzCon or you're watching via the virtual ticket, you'll also get a golden copy of Marin the Fox. I'm excited about Marin. The only thing I hear here is if I get a golden Marin, I've got five goldens for the price of one, and that seems like a good deal for any looting adventurer. It's pretty awesome. The guild is really cool, but Marin's not the only member. In fact, the guild is so cool, they have a keyword, recruit. Recruit means summon a random minion from your deck. Let's take a look at one of those cards. Gather your party. You're sitting in a tavern, you're, got, you're a warrior, you've got six mana, and you get to recruit a minion. You'll summon a random minion from your deck, maybe something like the Lich King or Yasharaj. Those are absolutely the guys you want in your adventuring party. Recruit's pretty cool, and it introduces deck building challenges. How many minions do you want to have in your deck? Do you want to just have giant ones? Let's take a look at one of the other versions of Recruit that has slightly different deck building challenges, the Guild Recruiter. The Guild Recruiter will go out and she'll recruit a small minion for you, any minion that costs four or less. And these deck building challenges are different. Do you want only four drop minions? Do you want to have any ones, twos, or threes? Do you only want minions that have negative battle cries, things like Pit Lord, or cards with overload, like Flame Wreath Faceless? If you summon a minion from your deck, its battle cry won't fire, so those things won't hurt you. We're pretty interested in seeing how players explore with the recruit mechanic and build new decks. So, we have lots of treasure and lots of adventurers looking for treasure, but they have their work cut out for them because as the kobolds are digging, they're finding lots of things. And when a kobold finds a terrible, terrible monster, a kobold tunnels quickly in the opposite direction. Tunnel over monster lairs, tunnel under trolls and bears, tunnel round the oozing creep. By candlelight see sights so beastly when you dig, dig, dig down deep. Man, this place crawls. What kind of, what kind of monsters are we going to find in here, Ben? Well, what would a dungeon be without its wandering denizens of the deep? Any adventuring party knows as soon as you head into any dungeon, you're bound to run into something. And it turns out the kobolds have got more than their fair share full to deal with. And now, as a result, so do you. As an art team and a design team together, putting our own candles together, <laughs> as it were, figuring out what these would look like, we spent a lot of time to try to figure out not just what kind of creatures we would run into, but how do we do these in a hearthstone way? How do we bring out that charm and vibe? And what we ended up with was a series of faces that only a brood mother could love or fall in love with over time. And many of these would find their way into the set. Many of these would become some amazing cards that you'll have a chance to run into once the set's released. Some of them, however, have to get held over onto another card for another set and another day. <laughs> so, sorry, Mini Tarin, your day will come. Yeah, the giant hulking Pepe bird did not make it into the set but did find a place in my nightmares. You should, however, be prepared for, of course, the random wandering slime or oozes as they find their way down the tunnels, possibly sentient fungi who found ways of their own to trouble the adventuring crew. As you head deeper still, there will be even more challenges awaiting you, such as possibly treasure chests better left unopened, maybe a quill bore here and there, and of course fur bogs, which bring their own sense of danger as they have learned to harness mystical arts, making lives truly troublesome for your loot adventurers. And then finally, as the halls have opened up and the halls get bigger and the end game gets even stronger, we run into some truly fearsome creatures that you won't want to write home about. <laughs> Those are some pretty scary monsters, Ben. Wouldn't it be terrible if you were just walking down a dungeon corridor, minding your own business, going face, and then out of nowhere, bam! Look out! Wandering monster. That sounds pretty scary, but it makes for a pretty cool hunter secret. When an enemy attacks your hero, you'll get to summon a random three-cost minion to defend you. That's pretty cool. Ben showed off some of the slimes and oozes in the set. Let's take a look at one of those as a collectible card. This is the Carnivorous Cube. It's battle cry, eats one of your minions, and then when it dies, you'll get two copies of it. Yeah, we don't talk about what happens inside the Carnivorous Cube. <laughs> something, something terrible. <laughs> Carnivorous Cube is modeled after one of the cards we really liked from One Night in Karazhan, the Moat Lurker. Moat Lurker could come into play, eat a minion, and then when the Moat Lurker died, you'd resummon it. 
it was really cool when you got to use Moat Lurker on one of your own death rattle minions, something like uh, Sylvanas, and be able to trigger its death rattle multiple times. So we wanted to make a card that better played that up, which led us to the Carnivorous Cube. If you eat one of your death rattle minions, you'll get a lot of death rattle triggers. But monsters aren't the only scary thing down here. There are also some terrible traps. Let's see one of those. These are the crushing walls. Ben showed this off this morning, and it destroys your opponent's outermost minions. Their left and rightmost minion just die. Let's see that in action. <clears throat> so they've got a Lich King, they've got Alexstrasza, and now they've got nothing. Problem solved. It's pretty great. So let's see, we've got Wandering Monsters, Carnivorous Cubes, Crushing Walls. All right, that's pretty mundane. Those are the mundane things in the Cobalt Catacombs. We've got some truly horrifying monsters down here. Some things that are so terrible, they require a legendary ritual to unlock. Let's take a look at Rin. Rin, the first disciple. She's the warlock legendary, and when she dies, she sets you on a terrible path. She begins a ritual. You'll get the first seal in your hand. And when you break it, you'll summon a 2-2 demon and this, gain the second seal. Break the second seal, you get a 3-3 demon. Sensing a pattern here, Peter. Now you've got the third seal and the fourth seal and the final seal. So now here you are, 31 mana later, <laughs> and you've earned Azari the Devourer. Let's take a look. Battle cry. <laughs> Destroy your opponent's deck. Let's see that in action. <laughs> so we've got Azari and they have a deck. And we play Azari and we fixed it. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. That's one of my favorite animations. Wow, that is some scary stuff. The dungeon is a terrible place. We've got these powerful adventurers on one side. We've got these horrible monsters in the middle and, and on the other. And in the middle, we have the kobolds. This is their time to shine. This is when they put their candles together. They pull their resources and they form an unstoppable army of... Oh, who are we kidding? They're kobolds. What, what are they going to do? Somehow they're going to have to squeak by. Come beasts that prowl and growl. Come heroes and knights most foul, with our noggins we'll contrive. Always skulking, never balking, we kobolds will survive. You know, I've been reading these verses to you. This is something we wrote early on in the design process because we wanted to explore what does the dungeon look like if you're the lowest monster on the totem pole. We gravitated toward kobolds for a couple of reasons on this set. Uh, one is they're the kind of a small monster that you might find in all kinds of dungeon environments, so we really like that. The other is, there's something uniquely Warcraft about the Warcraft kobolds. The way they use their candles on their head as a mining light. They even have their own catchphrase. Come say it with me now. You no, no take, take candle! Love these guys. We knew once we tried to figure out how to get them into Hearthstone, our team would have a lot of fun with this. This is, in fact, how most of us remember kobolds looking from our time in World of Warcraft. The literal tunnel rats of Azeroth, forever beseeching us to refrain from snuffing out their tallowed illuminations. And most of us did it, right? <laughs> so what happens when we corner these poor beasts in their own lair? Just what can we expect then? Well, as Dave mentioned, these are some resourceful fellows. And as a result, they've started to look to their own environment to provide the answers. You've got some who've fashioned armor out of some of the poorer beasts in the deep. You've got some who've maybe harnessed the more magical property of the incandescent fungi. Heh <laughs> Want to buy a fungal cake? You've even got, as you head in deeper, you, the crystal veins that run along the walls. And some of them have started to level up their own weapons with that. Or to hear them tell it, make diggy things glow bright. And finally, you've got some that have learned the mystical arts of the darker magics themselves. And while they might be just as dangerous to those around them, or even to themselves, there's still nothing to laugh about. 
Now, get to the deepest layers, and some of these guys have found a way to turn some of the denizens of the deep to their own resourcefulness. We've got dire moles that have been used to dig deeper and deeper still, and some of them have even found ways to harness the magical properties of wax itself. Truly terrifying if you've made it this far. So we have the idea that the kobolds are sort of making do with their environment as best they can. So if they discover a mushroom cave, they might use these mushrooms to create concoctions to use against adventurers or to use as illumination. Here's somebody you might find. This is Voodoo Master Vex. Voodoo Master Vex is a kobold who was digging some tunnels and stumbled on a troll burial ground. Voodoo Master Vex has been hanging out with trolls so long, he thinks he is a troll. He loves hexes. You might run across him in the single-player dungeon. And then this guy is one of our favorites, Candlebeard. <laughs> Candlebeard was tunneling along one day, and he stumbled on a buried pirate treasure. Now, Candlebeard does not have a ship of his own. In fact, Candlebeard has never seen the ocean, but he thinks he's a pirate. His favorite move is charged. Thank you, I'm here all weekend. Tip your waiter. <laughs> With all of those awesome kobolds, we needed to have awesome designs to go with them. And so we tried to figure out what different kobolds could do. Here is the kobold illusionist. When he dies, he's going to summon a shadow copy of one of the minions in your hand. That could be something innocuous, like a Gadgetan auctioneer, or a Malagos, or maybe another Death Rattle minion. So you can take advantage of that and do some pretty cool things. But rogues aren't the only ones who get kobolds. We wanted to have a paladin kobold too. With all of those adventurers running around in the dungeon, we needed to have a solution. The kobolds were going to throw them in jail. Here's the Dry Gulch Jailer. When he dies, you get to rescue three Silver Hand recruits that he'd been keeping in prison. This is pretty cool with some of the Mean Streets of Gadget Zans cards that buff the minions in your hand. It also gave us a great story for why we have kobolds in Paladin. Now, just who leads these tunnel-digging misfits of Azeroth, you may ask? What kind of luminary would it take to bring all the candles together under a single, albeit slightly brighter, candle of his own? begin our search for the Cobalt King. As we began to take the first forays into what it would take to lead such a bunch of rat men across the world of Azeroth, we knew that he would sit on a waxen throne. That much was without question. But would he perhaps be carried through the tunnels on a dais of his own, carried by some of the smaller, meeker kobolds? Perhaps, in fact, his mode of transportation would be a golem of his own mystical construct. Ultimately, as it turns out, all you really need to be the leader of the Cobalt Nation is that extra IQ point that it takes to think about putting a lantern on the candle around your head to keep it from being snuffed out. And so, we ended up with this guy. This is our first sketch of King Togwaggle, the king of the kobolds. We see him here in the initial concept sketch with the treasure that he has strapped to his back for safekeeping, mostly from other kobolds, probably, and his regal shovel, lest anyone question his sovereignty. And as we see him in the game, lounging on his throne in a somewhat cocky manner. He's pretty sure no adventurers are going to find their way down to him. But if you do, keep in mind it's going to take more than just your wits to snuff out this particular candle. There is a secret to the lantern he wears on his head, and you might discover it if you run across him at the bottom of our dungeon. All, Hearthstone often has like a, a host to kind of welcome you to the adventure, be it party hard, medieve, and the put upon morose, or the Lich King goading and taunting you forward. The Candle King, uh, the, the Cobalt King kind of acts as our host this time around. And he's got a tough job. He's got these ragamuffin kobolds, and then he's got these adventurers, these monsters. But he's got a plan. He's going to make this situation work for him. Let them come and loot our realm. Let them come steal boots and helms. Listen to my lamp, you unwashed gaggle. We'll take measures, steal their treasures, and give the best to me, Togwaggle. The Cobalt King's plan is going to come into fruition in the single-player Hearthstone mode that we've created. Uh, since Knights of the Frozen Throne, Hearthstone always has a full set of cards as well as a free single-player mission content. This time around, we wanted to go big. We wanted to capture that fantasy of 
storming into a dungeon. And you kick down a door and you don't know what's behind it. There's going to be some terrible monster. You're going to fight the terrible monster. And then you're going to loot the monster and you're going to get more powerful so you can kick down another door, fight another monster, and delve deeper and deeper into the dungeon. We really wanted to capture that fantasy. To that end, we created a whole new single player experience in Kobolds and Catacombs that we call the Dungeon Run. Best of all, it's playable here on the floor at BlizzCon. So if you're here at BlizzCon, come join us in the North Hall. It's like all the way in the other side of the convention. Really cool, huge Hearthstone area. We have a playable demo, a little subset of the dungeon that you can check out. For those of you at home, the expansion comes out in December. You're going to love it. You're going to love it the most. Here's the way it works. First, you pick a class. All nine classes are represented in the dungeon run. All of them have slightly different deck building options. And I should say, this is a completely self-contained thing. You're going to build the deck inside the dungeon. You don't need any cards to play. It's free to play. Come on board. You pick a class, no matter what class you start with, you're going to start with 15 health and only 10 cards, like a relatively weak deck of only 10 cards. Everything else you need, you're going to have to find in the dungeon. And you do that by beating monsters. That's step two. You fight some different bosses. Now, there's 48 different encounters in the dungeon run. And every time you start a new dungeon run, the game deals out a deck of eight encounters of increasing difficulty. Your job is to see if you can make your way through all eight. If you beat a boss, uh, then the cool stuff, then you get loot. We have lots of different loot options. We have what we call treasures. These are cards, they're so powerful, we can only put them in the dungeon. We would never print them in the collectible set. You'll build your whole deck around these treasures. They're so powerful. You'll also loot cards from all the bosses that you defeat. Uh, cards from all across the history of Hearthstone. Cards from this expansion and all the previous expansions. You're going to try and build a deck that's going to get you to the bottom of the dungeon where one of two things will happen. Fortune and glory! Or you get killed. Uh, the latter is probably far more likely because the dungeon is a really scary place. It's really, really difficult. And here's the thing. It's all or nothing. So if you're defeated by a monster, that's it. Your tech is gone. Your hero is gone. You're going to have to start again with 15 health and 10 cards. So let me tell you, when you're deep in the dungeon, your pulse starts really racing because you know every mistake counts. So that's the overview. That's how it works. You never know what you'll find in the dungeon. So uh, we'll give you a little sample of, of things you might find, starting with encounters. Now, as Dave mentioned, there's 48 possible bosses you can run into in a dungeon. That's a lot of bosses. We don't have time to cover those here today. We can't wait for you to discover them yourselves. But let's look at a subset of three of those right now. The very first one is Battlecryer Jinzo. Now, this is a particularly nasty troll. It's all in his name. The battle cries played by either you or your opponent, in this case, Battlecryer Jinzo, play twice. Now that makes for a nasty fight, and it's going to take a little bit of thinking to get through that. So put those candles on your head and think through that. The second one is Waxmancer Sturmy. Waxmancer Sturmy is particularly creepy because she's the aforementioned cobalt who's found a way to bend the wax to her will and create, in her case, waxen constructs or idols that mimic other minions, either hers or yours. They come out in a 1-1 form onto the board at a time of her choosing, of course on her turn, most likely. Now, both of these characters are playable here on the floor today if you're over in the Hearthstone Hall that Dave mentioned earlier. So try your wits against them and see how you do. The third one isn't even a character. The third one's a Room of Traps. Now, the Room of Traps is a rare encounter. It's one that doesn't show up as often, and you'll be thankful for that because it's actually one of the hardest encounters you will do, and the QA department at Blizzard can actually attest to this. It's killed more of them than any of the others combined. Now, it's important here to keep your wits about you because... We're not going to tell you a thing about this room. It's just it's super creepy, super secret, and we look forward to you guys diving into this one at the time of release. So we've got some terrible monsters, and your lowly level one deck isn't going to cut it. So we need you to get better. We talked a lot about what are the forms of progression that we want to give you. We settled on three. First, you're going to find passive upgrades. You'll find two of these over the course of your run, and they'll just make you better. You're just better for the whole rest of the run. Maybe your minions are bigger. They have plus one, plus one. Maybe your opponent's minions cost more mana. But whichever passives you choose, the rest of your run, 
you're just a more powerful adventurer. That's pretty cool. So the passives are cool, but the treasures are crazy. You're going to find two of these on the course of your run as well, and they are insane. These are cards so horrifying, we can only let you play them against the AI. So let's take a look at the Gloves of Mugging. You steal three cards from your opponent's hand, so they lose three and <laughs> you get three. It's pretty good. Even crazier, we have the Rod of Roasting. This just fires pyroblasts until somebody dies. Possibly my favorite text in the expansion. <laughs> it ends games pretty quickly. So treasures are awesome, passives are great, but the main way that you're going to customize your deck and the main way that you can show that you deserve to conquer the Cobalt Catacombs are through piles of loot. Every single boss you beat has three piles of loot, each with three cards in them. And so you'll be able to choose one of these at the end of every encounter to add to your deck. These each are pulled from synergistic themes, things like frost spells or unique cards that take advantage of Reno Jackson or Inkmaster Solia. So you'll get to make one of these choices after every single boss. So that gives you a huge amount of opportunity to customize your deck and really make it feel like your own. These loot piles don't respect any of the normal deck building rules. So if you ended up not getting the Rod of Roasting and you want to mimic that behavior, you can take 10 Pyroblasts if they're offered to you. It might take you a few tries to get there, but you can build the craziest decks you can possibly imagine using, as Dave mentioned, cards from all of Hearthstone's history. So that's pretty awesome. And the amount of customization you have here is basically unlimited. So I know what you're thinking. Gosh, I wish somebody was here to provide a recap for us so we know just how many numbers have been thrown out. Well, wait no more. We've got nine classes to pick from, 48 possible encounters of bosses in groups of eight as they get put into an eight-card boss deck, and 40 treasures. How many common unitorics are we talking here? What, how many options? I'm, I'm glad you asked because we wanted to figure it out. With all, those, with all those encounters and all those treasures and all those loot cards and all the different classes, we tried to figure out how many combinations are possible. How many different things could you see during a dungeon run? So we assembled a team of crack cobalt mathemagicians to do the math for us. They put their candles together and over the course of many weeks and many, many snacks, the number they came up with was one. Point four. Cobillion, Cobillion, can you believe it? That is amazing. How, how, how big is that? We have no idea. It turns out kobolds are terrible at math. This was a bad idea. It's, it's a lot. It's a whole bunch. That's the thing that excites us most about the dungeon run is we don't have any idea how many combinations are possible. It's going to be different every time you play. That's what makes it so exciting. We can't wait for you guys to try it out next month. Which brings us to our final chapter, which is all about you. Are you guys ready for Cobalts and Catacombs? Are you guys ready to delve into the dungeon run? Well, the Cobalts are ready for you. Dig secret doors and ready pikes. Dig hidden pits with sharpened spikes. Hide tricks and traps and trials around. They will persist. None can resist a staircase leading down. That is Cobalts and Catacombs. We are... We are incredibly excited for this expansion. If you're excited too, you can pre-order now on our website or starting next week in The Client. We showed off 14 cards today and they are pretty cool. We'll start showing off more cards on November 20th, so stay tuned. Guys, we couldn't be more happy to have spent the last 45 minutes with you here today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your obviously busy BlizzCon schedule with which to do it. We'd like to invite you over to the North Hall, where many of us will be throughout the course of the convention, and spend some time delving into the catacombs on your own. Until then, thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of the convention. Thank, thank you, BlizzCon. You,